This is section 9.3. We're doing geometric sequences in series. And so once again, sequences are just listings of numbers. Series would take those numbers and then add them all up. If we do uh, geometric sequences, they all have a common ratio. So for example, if I do 2, 6, 18, 54, how do you get from one term to another? Well, we're going to multiply by 3 over and over again. So to get this ratio of 3, very simply, you can take 6 divided by 2, any term divided by the previous term, and 18 divided by 6. And this one's pretty easy to do, but when you get into fractions, then it's not as apparent to look at. So if you just divide any term divided by the previous term, you're going to get 3 every time. So that's what this is saying here. Sequence is geometric if the ratios of the consecutive terms are the same. So these are all the terms. Take any term divided by its previous term, and that will give you your ratio. The next set of examples are listings of sequences. I want you to go through, pause now, and figure out which ones are arithmetic, geometric, or neither. If they are one of those, then find a rule for a sub n. You can maybe even find a sub n if it's not arithmetic or geometric. So here we go. The first one's geometric, common ratio of two. You multiply by two every time you go up. Second one's arithmetic. You decrease by eight every time, so that would be a difference of negative eight. Geometric for this one, ratio of three. This one's neither. This is a harmonic, so it's a reciprocal of an arithmetic, but it is, uh, being the reciprocal, then it's not an arithmetic itself, and we call it a harmonic. You can look up harmonic and see that it's applicable in many different um, areas. And then the next one would be geometric. This one may be tricky for some of you, but you can take any term divided by the previous term, or what value do I need to multiply by to get from this term to the next term. And notice that it also al alternates. Alternating, as soon as it's alternating, you should be thinking about geometric. It cannot be arithmetic if it goes from positive to negative, positive to negative, or, or negative, positive, so on. And so the ratio here then would be negative. We're going to multiply by a negative one-third every time. And then this one, it looks like it might be geometric. I multiply by two-thirds, but in actuality, I'm squaring this term to get to the next term. And so if you had to do a, a recursive formula, this is going to be a sub n is equal to the previous term and you're going to square it. And maybe you can come up with a recursive formula as well. a sub n is equal to 2 thirds raised to the 2 to the n. Would it be n or n minus 1? I believe it's n minus 1. I think that would work. You can double check that. Now for general terms of a geometric sequence, all we're doing is we're multiplying by r each time. So the first term would be a sub 1. The second term would be a sub 1 times r. And we're going to multiply by another r to get the next term, and so on and so on. And so this exponent is always going to be 1 less than the cell number that we're in. And so this one would be a1 times r to the n minus 1. So if we do a general rule, this would be the general rule for our terms. So the next one say find the 15th term of the geometric series from 1 to 5, uh, 1 to 6. This one, number 1, I can use this formula now. This is the general formula for this one. And it, a sub 15 just means I put 15 up here for the exponent, so it's going to be to the 14th power. So looking at this, the a sub 15 is going to be equal to the first term. That's this right here times my ratio raised to the 14th power, one less than I, I have cell numbers. So I'm just starting from my first term, and then these are my ratios every time. I'm only doing 14 ratios to get to the 15th term. Same thing here for number three. Number three is a geometric. Ratio three, first term is 12, and so I can go three to the 14th, and then find out what that number is. And then this one, my ratio is less than one, uh, I should say the absolute value of my ratio is less than 1. And when I raise that to the 14th, I'm going to get a very small number. So this is the first term, this is the ratio, and then this is to the n minus 1. And notice that we get a 
you got to take this negative to the 14th, which makes this positive. I'm saying here on the calculator, if you put negative one third to the 14th, you're going to get a negative number, which is incorrect. You got to put parentheses around it because the negative is being raised to the 14th as well. Okay. Then other examples. If I have this situation here, a sub one is uh, a sub four is equal to six, and a sub nine is equal to seven twenty nine over sixteen. I want to rename the sequence. I don't like starting at four, so I'm going to call that a sub one, and then a sub nine. I'm going to call it a sub six, and so I'm going to end up with different cells um, for what I'm doing, and so I'm going to have the one, two, three, four, five, six terms, where this one's a six, and then this one's 729 over 16. First and sixth term, and then I can go ahead and find the ratio. So I take this sequence formula, nth term is equal to the first term times r to the n minus one, and I plug it in. So six is my first term, r to the fifth, since it's sixth term, this is my sixth term. So if you divide both sides by six and then take the fifth root. Remember, take the fifth root means that you can raise to the one divided by five. On your calculator, you can find the fifth root too, but I'm not gonna do that here. And then uh, what happens is that since I renamed my sequence, I didn't like these numbers, the 14th term that I'm asking for is actually going to be the 11th term in my blue sequence here, in the new one that I created. So I'm going to find a sub 11, 6 times 15 raised to the 10th, and then that would be my value. Uh, next example, if a sub 1 is equal to 216, r is equal to 2 thirds, and a sub n is equal to this value, I want to find n. And so if I set this one up, I'm going to have to probably use logarithms. So First term, ratio to the n minus one, and then this is the particular term that I'm looking for. Divide both sides by 216, and then I get this where I need to solve for the exponent. Oh, how do we solve for a variable in the exponent? Logarithm, so you take the log of both sides, either log or ln, and then I get the variable out of the exponent by bringing it down in front. Divide both sides by ln three, make sure you try this, and then you should get nine. And so n is equal to 10. Now to the proofs, well I shouldn't say the proofs, but we want to do a sum. And so we're going to be adding up a finite geometric series. And so if I add up all of these terms, I'm going to get a sum formula, which is right here. Well, how did they get that? Well, I have the proof written out here and I'll just explain it. What we have is all these terms, and I'm going to write those out. So S sub n is equal to all of these things, and I'm just multiplying by r each time. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same exact sequence, and I'm going to multiply every term by r. So I'm going to take this a1 and multiply by r, and that's what I'm going to get there. I'm going to take this a1r and multiply by r, and that's going to give me a squared cubed, and so on. So we get this pattern. I'm going to get this term, but everything's shifted over one, so I'm going to get an extra term on this side. This would be a1 times r to the nth. So if I multiply this term right here times r, bases are the same, I'm going to add exponents. n minus 1 plus 1 is going to give me n. Then of these two sequences, I'm going to subtract. So s sub n minus r s sub n, and look what happens to all of these they all cancel off. So I'm left with a sub 1 and a negative a sub 1 times r to the nth. And that's what I have here. Factor out a 1 minus r, and it's going to be equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the nth. And that's my formula. This is how you find a sum of a geometric series. So we are in series now. We're adding things up. If we have an infinite geometric series, what that means then is that we uh, can add an infinite number of terms, but only as under a certain condition. If my ratio is less than one, and it could be positive or negative, so absolute value of r is less than one, my ratio is less than one, then I can get a 
finite sum for an infinite series. In class, they asked me to show you the paper tearing exercise and show you how that works. And so how do we prove this one? Well, I'm going to take this series formula here and I'm going to send n off to infinity. As long as my ratio is less than 1, that means that that thing raised to infinity is going to be, and this notation is poor, but r to infinity is going to equal 0. So take a half to a billion, it's going to be very close to 0. So 1 half raised to infinity is going to approach 0. So this one's very simple. If I take the limit as n approaches infinity from the left side of this equation and the right side of this equation, this r to the nth is going to go to 0. So I'm just going to be left with a1 over 1 minus r, which is actually our easiest formula, even though it's adding up an infinite number of terms. So this one, uh, we can find the sums using our newfound formula. And this is a great point right here. Always write out the first few terms to get an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to write out these. Start at this lower index, which is 1. Plug it in. 2 to the 0 and times 3 would just give me 3. Second term, 2 minus 1 is 2 to the 1st. So it's going to be 3 squared, which is 6. And uh, so on. And this one's going to be geometric in nature with a ratio of 2. I hope you identify this as a geometric sequence formula. The whole thing together, though, would be a series because we have the summation. So we're multiplying by 2 each time. So the sum of n terms is going to be equal to first term of well, that formula. And so the sum of seven terms in this case is going to be 3 to the 1 minus 2 to the 6. And this should be 7 there. 3 times 1 minus 2 to the 7th all over 1 minus 2 and that gives you 381 so that total is correct now this one this one goes off to infinity so I'm going to take first term second term da 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 all the way to infinity of uh, geometric here first term is going to be 5 oh no this k value is just going to be uh, plugging in I'm going to plug in 1 and so this is going to be 5 times 1 half and so if I want to write out my first term it'd be 5 halves. And if I do this again, this is going to be 5 fourths. And so on, forever. And so if I look at this, this is an infinite geometric. My first term is 5 halves, and I'm going to divide by 1 minus 1 half, which is another half, multiply half, but so this ends up being 5. So we can add up an infinite number of terms as long as our ratio is less than 1. If this ratio is bigger than 1, we cannot do it anymore. This one, 9 tenths. 9 tenths, if I keep on raising this, this will go to 0 as well. And so we're going to be OK. Ratio is less than 1. And so I need the first term. Look at this index. Index is 4. So i got to take 4 and plug it in here for k to find my very first term. And that's going to be 656.1. Now I can do the infinite geometric. S sub infinity is equal to a1 divided by 1 minus r equal to those values and you get 6561. Uh, so we can add up those infinite number of terms. Now the last problem here is very interesting I think. It's about an annuity where we, an annuity really is just where you make a commitment to add a certain amount of money to an investment every month. And it also can be where an investment pays you back every month on money that you've invested. We want to use the calculator for this situation, so you have to get this out, and we're going to have to put it in sequence mode. To do this quickly, I'm going to run out of time on this video, though, but you go to mode, and you go over to sequence. And when you go over to sequence, if you hit Y equals, everything's going to change. N min is your starting cell, so you either start at 0 or 1. For money, you usually start at 0. This U sub N, it replaces A sub N. We don't have a subscript on the calculator, so u sub n, there's nothing really that would plug it in for n, it just means now, this now term. And so this is going to be equal to the previous term. You get that u from going second number seven, and then you do parentheses, and then if, when, if you're in sequence mode and you click on this one, that will give you your n. You can find an example of this in post 9.3 notes.